Hello and welcome to another in a series of technology-focused tips brought to you by K2 Enterprises. My name is Tommy Stevens. I'm one of the partners at K2 Enterprises, and it will be my pleasure to lead you through a quick discussion of how you can use Excel's Power Query feature to perform what is known as fuzzy matching. Now, fuzzy matching in and of itself is not a new concept. In fact, for a number of years now, there has been a fuzzy lookup add-in available for Excel, allowing you to match inexact sets of data to each other in, the, uh, in an ordinary Excel spreadsheet, let's say it that way. What we now have available to us, though, is that same fuzzy matching capability, except it's embedded in Power Query. And when we choose to use this fuzzy matching logic inside Power Query, it really does set the stage for just incredibly powerful uh, queries of data and reports that we can build uh, utilizing Excel. Let's jump in and take a look at how we can use fuzzy matching inside Power Query. Now, as you can see, I have a couple of very small tables sitting on the face of this Excel spreadsheet. No need to get bogged down in too much volume as we're learning these concepts. The table on the left, I've conveniently named Table 1, and the table on the right, I've conveniently named Table 2. If you look at the structure of these two tables, essentially we could say that Table number 1 is what I would call a master file table, and Table number 2 is a transactional table. The problem that we have, if we want to summarize the transactions in Table number two based on the names in table number one is some of the names are not exact matches. For example, in the table on the left, you see uh, employee ID number four, Zoe, for example. Zoe is listed as Zoe G in table number two and also Zoe Gaines in table number two an inexact match. If we were to try to utilize a VLOOKUP or index and match function or something of that nature to match that data, we would not be able to do so. Similarly, if we see employee number one in the table on the left, Bill, for example, we can see that in table number two, we have Bill listed there, but also all the way down in the 11th position, we have Bill Harris. Let's assume that Bill Harris is Bill. We would certainly want Bill Harris's results included underneath Bill. And one final example here, employee number three in table number one, see th that uh, employee's name is William. Notice in table number two, we have a William in, uh, as a, the ID field number four there, but we also have Willie. And uh, Willie, of course, is a nickname for William, and we would want Willie sales included underneath William. All of these are examples of why we might need to utilize fuzzy matching. Now let's jump into Power Query and see how we can make this happen. I am going to begin by clicking on table number one, clicking on the data tab of the ribbon, and then under Get and Transform Data, tell Power Query that I want to bring some data into Power Query, but actually I'm not going to use any of those options. Rather, a shortcut option, given the fact that this data is already on the face of the Excel spreadsheet, is to just simply use the From Table Range option. I'll click on From Table Range. That is going to query that data into Power Query. And all I'm going to do is where it reads Close and Load, I'm simply going to say Close and Load to, and I only want to create the connection. I don't really want any of that data just yet. Just preserve the connection for me, if you will, Power Query. I'll click OK to complete that process, and now we see that I have a new query, uh, which is giving me the connection only to table number one. Now let's repeat that same process with table number two. Again, just click anywhere on table number two, and then choose from table range. And once Power Query identifies that data, again, I will just say close and load to. And once again, I only want to create the connection. Click OK. And we now have two connections inside this workbook, one, of course, to table one, and the second to table number two. Now, frankly, those connections don't really do me a lot of good right now. I need to, I need to somehow figure out a way of merging that information together. I'm going to open a clean worksheet within this workbook. And now I am going to go back to Power Query and say that I want to get data. But this time, I want to get data by combining queries. In fact, I want to merge those two queries that we previously created. So I click the Merge option. And I will say that I want to merge the data from table number one 
into the data in table number two. Now, as I'm doing this, Power Query is not really identifying anything for me to merge just yet. Or let me say that differently. It's identifying just a handful of records to merge right now. So I want to select this option uh, and check this box labeled Use Fuzzy Matching to perform the merge. I'll check the box for fuzzy matching, expand out my fuzzy merge options, and now I have a number of additional options in which I can, um, I can use, let, let's say, to refine my, my query. More specifically, what I really want to do is allow fuzzy matching a little bit more latitude with respect to the merge. In this similarity threshold box, we can enter a value of anything between 0 and 1. The default is 0.8. And you can simply think of this as a confidence interval uh, for just how exact the match has to be if indeed fuzzy merge finds some inexact matches. I think what I'll do is simply enter a value there of 0.7. That is, I'm willing to take a, a little bit more risk excuse me, willing to take a little bit more risk if fuzzy merge can find more results. The last thing that I need to do is indicate that we want it to merge based on the first name. So I'm just simply clicking uh, each of those columns uh, that, that is the first name column. Now interestingly, we see down at the bottom fuzzy merge is telling us, it's telling us that it has identified six out of six rows from the first table. Well, let's click OK and take a look and see what our results might be momentarily. Going it back into the Power Query Editor and expanding out the tables, we actually can see that Fuzzy Merge did indeed find a, a, a match, albeit an exact match, on all of the transactional records that we had. In fact, maybe what I choose to do now is say, let's close and load. But very specifically, let's choose to load this to a pivot table. Upon clicking OK, now I'm going to have the ability of building a pivot table that summarizes our activity by first name, by state, and by sales amount. As you can see, we do indeed have that pivot table summarizing by the first name. And again, that's the first name out of the table one table. The state is also coming out of the table one table, but the amounts are coming from the table two table. Let's go back to our original data. Remember the original data resides on sheet number one, and now in sheet number one, let's add another record. More specifically to table number two, our transactional data, let's add a record for Pam F. And again, we all see situations like this in the, in the everyday business world where people don't necessarily follow good naming conventions and they use nicknames, they use uh, first names only, first names and uh, the first character of the last name, situations like that. So what we want to do is, is label this person Pam F. And let's, <clears throat> let's say that Pam F has $1,000 in sales. With $1,000 in sales in place, let me actually delete that extraneous row that I just added there mistakenly. Let's now go back over to our pivot table and, and see that Pam only has total sales of $500. Now, that is only because we've not yet refreshed. In fact, when I click on this pivot table, more specifically right-click and choose Refresh, now you see that Pam's data has been updated with the sales transaction otherwise attributable to Pam F. Power Query continues to grow in its strength. Microsoft is adding new features to this tool seemingly on a daily basis, although certainly it's not quite that often. But clearly, over the past 18 or so months, a number of new features have been added into Power Query. Let me just suggest that if you are not already working with Power Query, or perhaps you are running a version of Excel that does not really have the full uh, capability of Power Query as provided through Office 365, you should probably begin exploring how to work with Power Power Query and or how to upgrade to a version of Excel that will give you all of these capabilities. It truly is an amazing tool. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope that you found this tip to be helpful. Come back and join us again real soon. As you will find, we tend to publish uh, new tips to our YouTube channel periodically, and we hope that we'll see you back out here uh, in the very near future. On behalf of everyone at K2 Enterprises, once again, thanks for stopping by.